Hi, I'm Bridget from Suburban Sandcastles and I'm here with Cindy O'Meara, nutritionist and amazing, inspiring woman who has now been in business for 25 years doing what you do with Changing Habits. Yeah. And what just astounds me is how much passion and energy you bring to your conversations with all these people who want to see you, want to speak to you. They're waiting over here now to, to ask you more questions about what you do and what, yeah. how you can help them heal their lives. And really what I want to know is how do you bring such energy, what drives you? Because you, you do this day in, day out and you speak with such authority and such conviction and such love for everyone's journeys. Can you share a bit about that? <laughs> oh gosh, you know what, it, it was actually all about me. It was about me being the best version of myself mm -hmm. and then helping my family be the most healthy family I could possibly be. And then what happened was I was in playgroup and mothers used to ask me, how do you do what you do and why are your kids never on antibiotics and they're never sick and they've not got running noses. How, what do you do? And so it was, I guess, being a mum and I'd already had my degree and I'd already done things that I get, it was being a mum and influencing other mothers and realising I could do that. And then being frustrated writing for the paper and saying, I'm going to write a book that nobody can, you know, gag me and say what I can or I cannot say. And, and that's all it's really been. And I have just such a thirst for knowledge. I want to know things. I want to be on the cutting edge. And I don't spend my time listening to radio or watching television. I spend my time going through podcasts and research and what's the latest and who's thinking outside the square and mm -hmm. and does this go with my philosophy mm -hmm. so yeah that's my I guess that's that's where it happened and I, and I look at my business now and and I you know I employ just under 20 people I'm in a big warehouse I came from my home in a little office and I do, I pinch myself and I, I think it's because of the demand. Mm. People are sick. Mm. People are getting sicker and sicker and sicker and they realise that what they were doing is not working and they have to do something different mm. and I guess I offer that different way because that's the way I was brought up. Mm. It's so inspiring. I've heard so much about your journey and really that desire to be on the cutting edge is what inspired you to connect with all these people around the philosophy of this What About Wheat film that you're currently producing. I'm really excited to share that with our Suburban Sandcastles audience and I'd love to hear a bit more about that, who you've interviewed for that and what the real message about that is. That, you know, it's just it's been an amazing journey. So five years ago, I turned 50, I was putting on weight, still eating from home, kitchen, food, everything perfect that I thought. Um, I was getting aches and pains, sore backs, sore hip where I couldn't even stand and I did an elimination diet and thought well I'll figure out what food's causing it. It was wheat. I thought well hang on, what's wrong with wheat? I'd done cultural anthropology, um, I use organic wheat, I do everything right, why, why is wheat my problem? And so it put me on this amazing journey and I thought if I'm like this there must be other people like this that are worse because I do the best You're quite that I conscious can. With what you I'm very yeah. conscious. So um, I just decided that I would do do this movie, and it started off. The, the working title was oh gosh, I, I, it was the weird working title. But then we realised it was all about wheat, mm. and the story of wheat is the story of food. Mm. So I just concentrated on wheat. So the people that I've interviewed are um, scientists, gastroenterologists, um, neurologists, psycho psychiatrists. People that um, are looking at new ways of helping other people get well. Mm. And they all realise that we have an issue with gluten. Mm. We have an issue with wheat. Is it the fructans, the amylopectin? Is it the Roundup that they spray on it? Is it the phosphine that they um, fumigate it with? Is it the processing, the taking away the bran, the, the wheat germ? And all of a sudden there was this cascade of events that took the beautiful wheat grain mm. into something that's probably quite poisonous for mm. us. And it's not only that, but it's what they spray on the wheat that's killing our microbiome. Yeah. And then therefore it's killing the microbiome, therefore we can't digest the fruit tans. Mm. The amylopectin goes straight into the blood. The gluten can't be digested. It opens up the, the junctions, the tight junctions in our gastrointestinal tract. It goes in, creates this immune complex mm. and perpetuates an autoimmune disease. Mm. So it was like this cascade of events that I, I just was absolutely blown away by. But I, I think where the whole movie starts is it's the chemical revolution. Yeah. That's where it starts. Back in the 30s when we started to poison our, our, our weeds but we poisoned the food as well. Mm. And then that poisoned our gut and then that poisoned our... F oh, it, was, it, it's, it is actually um, a perfect storm yeah. to create the problems we have today. We have children who are so sick they 
They can't even drink their mother's milk. Mm. They can't eat foods. They have allergies to sensitivities or sensitivities and tolerances. And I think that's uh, that really upsets me. Yeah, I think it's just absolutely it's a perfect storm, isn't it? Because there is mm. just we're at this point where there's, well, there's so many mothers and I love that message that you say that that was really what spurred you on to do this work was seeing all these mothers and just uh, mm. throwing their hands out what do we do about our children and yeah. that's where it comes from isn't it it really comes from mothers wanting to make a change you know what I think mothers are the drivers of change mm. because they, they're they desperate for their children and they'll do anything to get them fixed and um, they they start looking outside um, modern medicine I mean, modern medicine's wonderful but they it's not correcting the real issue that we yeah. have here yeah. and so we have to look outside that and and they they do they're, they're desperate like I, in this conference that we're at right now I have been bombarded and it's all mums mm. with children who cry you know and I cry with them you know it's just yeah and I do I just go I was so fortunate I was brought up very differently and so were my children mm. and um, I look at the health of my children and their generation and it was good and they're only in their 20s mm. it's this next generation that's really really having a problem and an issue so well thank you so much about with sharing all of that Cindy and I look forward to seeing the film thank you thank you (laughs)